Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I do want to speak about Moscardo from Corinthians and we're also going to be speaking about Vitor Roque and what are the current updates regarding his future with Barcelona? Is he actually going to be coming to the club in January? Yes or no? If you guys do also want to support this YouTube channel, please like this video and also subscribe to the channel. We do talk about everything regarding FC Barcelona and if you are a diehard Barcelona fan, this is going to be the channel for you. Also keep in mind that we do have a Discord group chat. So if you guys do want to join our group chat where we we talk about what's currently going on in the world of football you guys can also do that there is going to be a link on the description box down below and also on the pinned comment so let's go into these topics right and let's talk about Moscardo first so keep in mind and I want everybody here to have context he has been wanted by Chelsea Chelsea have already given out like two bids for this Brazilian midfielder but they have been rejected because Chelsea have not been giving out the required bids Corinthians have been saying to Chelsea that the bids were just too low and that is why those two bids have been rejected and that is where Barcelona come into the picture because they're starting to see that right now it it is the time to sign this player and to strap him up and make sure that he is only committed for FC Barcelona. And it's going to be very similar to the operation of Vitor Roque because it does say here, according to Sport, that Deco was the key man in the signing of Vitor Roque. And now he intends to repeat the exact same operation of Gabriel Moscardo, who is only 18 years old. Barcelona's director of football believes that Moscardo is capable of joining FC Barcelona next summer and start to earn his place and believes that he has the right profile for the team. Next season, there will be space to sign players with this profile. The first movements have also already begun with contacts with Corinthians and they have been made known of Barcelona's interest. So it's some very exciting stuff and I think that Deco has what it takes to pull this move off because of his connections, because of what he has to do with the Brazilian market, the Portuguese market, and so forth, even the Argentinian market. He's very much well connected. Keep in mind that before this profession of becoming the sporting director of Barcelona, he was an agent. And when you are an agent, you need to have great connections. And that is what Deco brings to the table. And now that he has signed for Barcelona, you can just really understand his power and his influence and how many players we can bring from South America. And if you guys are not really familiar with Gabriel Moscardo's game and what he brings as a central defensive midfielder, he's very similar to someone like Rodri or even Declan Rice. I don't think that he has the same profile of Sergio Busquets. He's a much more physical central defensive midfielder, but he definitely has a very high ceiling, a lot of untapped potential here. And I also strongly believe that he is going to be a direct replacement for Oriol Romeo. Like bro, he's only 18 years old. He is considered to be a long-term replacement for that position and knowing Barcelona's financial restrictions, they're going to be betting on the youngsters and making sure that that youngster has a high ceiling and can give Barcelona a good 10 to 12 years, which is why he is so young. He's only 18 years old and they're betting on the player. And if they're going to bet on a player like him, who's coming from Brazil, of course, he is going to be a direct replacement to Oriol Romeo, who is 32, 33 years old. Barcelona want to move on. Barcelona want to rejuvenate this squad overall. And I also knew that this was going to happen. Like I did say about four to five to six months ago that Oriol Romeo was was going to be a signing just for the short term. It's going to be very similar to what happened with Kessier, very similar to what happened with Adam Traoré, Dani Alves. Barcelona do these type of things. They sign players for the short term and they let them go once they do find a reinforcement for that position or for that player. So it is pure strategy and planning coming from Joan Laporta, Deco, and Xavi Hernandez. And I think that he's going to bring a lot to the table. This player here is again very physical. He's good with both feet. He knows how to read the game, has a lot of personality. He can bring the ball forward. But like I've said, he's not the Sergio Busquets type of player, he's going to be a very different one and a very different profile. Now you may say that Oriol Romeo brings the defensive presence in the midfield. I think that Gavi also brings that. And so when you have like two players already in the midfield that brings the defensive presence, you need to kind of balance the midfield again, because Gavi is really becoming what Oriol Romeo is good at. Thanks to Xavi Hernandez placing Gavi in his correct position. And so how do you do that? You bring in a much more technical player that is able to be in a deeper role to Gavi and sit right next to Gavi. And that is again, Moscardo. So the fact that in the next season, our options are going to be Moscardo, Frankie Dion, Gavi, Pedri, Gundogan, and also Fermin Lopez. That is a very high technical midfield. And it also makes me wonder like what's going to happen in the future? Does this mean that with this signing, it's going to rule off the signing of Zubimendi, a player that Xavi Hernandez really wanted in the past summer, or someone like Joshua Kimmich, another number six that Xavi really wanted last summer? Who knows? But I think that it will. And if it does rule off these two players, I think that they're going to save those extra resources and reinforce other positions because Barcelona were preparing to spend around 65 to 70 million euros for Zubimendi and also the same thing for Joshua Kimmich. But with this player, Moscardo, only costing maybe 30 million euros, they're going to be saving an extra 40 to 45 million euros and they can use that for a different position. Now remember, I'm only speculating, but I hope that Barcelona do sign Rafael Liao next summer. Even though I know that he just signed a renewal with AC Milan, anything could happen, but I hope that they do sign Liao and maybe even on a loan move. Because if Barcelona are only going to be spending 25 million euros for Joao Cancelo and then sign a central defense 
defensive midfielder for only 30 million euros they're gonna have extra resources and I hope that it does go towards Liao and maybe Liao can even come on loan right Barcelona can do something creative they bring Liao on loan and they permanently sign Joao Felix and so that could be the signing of the summer which is Joao Felix and then the loan of the summer would be Rafael Liao and then you have those two players combating for that left wing role and I would love to see that because they're both friends they're both Portuguese they both have connections with Deco and also Jorge Mendes so I can see a certain plan like that happening so going back to Moscardo does this make sporting sense absolutely does it make financial sense of course only 30 million euros are you kidding me and maybe we can put him on a wage of four to five million euros it makes so much financial and sporting sense I can't even remember the last time Barcelona signed a central defensive midfielder that was Brazilian I think it was Paulinho about four to five years ago back in 2017 but that's nowhere near the signing that we're going to be making in the summer of 2024 because Paulinho was already a finished product and he was what I would say a short-term solution to fix our short-term problems this player here though Moscardo he does and will be fixing our medium to long-term problems they need a long-term successor and this is the player Deco and Xavi Hernandez are betting on some very exciting stuff so now I do want to quickly address the situation of Vitor Roque because it has been said here according to Mundo Deportivo that Deco will travel to Brazil during the upcoming international break to meet with Vitor Roque in person Deco wants to be with Roque and his entourage to check on his injury and how it's going to be evolving in the future he will also meet with Atletico Paranense's doctors Barcelona's director of football will also inform Roque that he will be registered in January pending the arrival money from Libero Football Finance so that is basically what is going on with Vitor Roque you can see that Barcelona are concerned because they don't want to hear any type of news about Vitor Roque potentially being out for like another four to five months or something like that because that injury that he did a cure it did look serious at that time and I know that Barcelona are planning to use Vitor January all the way until May 2024 they do have a plan in place like the sporting project is there which is why Deco will be visiting Vitor Roque during the international break now it's also very like worrying right that the investment fund is not giving out Barcelona the 40 million euros that they do need I don't know what's taking so long the agreement was made about five to six weeks ago maybe even like seven to eight weeks ago but Barcelona have yet to receive those funds and so if Barcelona want to sign Vitor and register him in January those funds are going to have to be injected to the club we're going to have to hear news regarding Libero Football Finance sending out the total 40 million euros then we should expect to hear the registration of Vitor Roque but that news of the cash injection has to come first so that is going to be wrapped up today's video thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one